The next Meghalaya Legislative Assembly election is scheduled to be held in Meghalaya by early 2023. While things are shaking up in the political sphere like never before, the excitement and anticipation all roll into one. Well, North East Live heads to Meghalaya to test the waters ahead of the polls. Here's a report. With the Legislative Assembly elections just around the corner, the political scenario in the state of Meghalaya is warming up by the day. Now, from pot shots to mergers, the 2023 elections will be nothing short of dramatic. Now, will the MDA coalition retain its power? Or will the new entrant, the TMC, spring up a surprise? Who will be the kingmaker? A lot of questions blowing in the air. On our quest to bring you all the lowdown from ground zero, we turn our attention to one of the biggest developments in the state that has made headlines. A dramatic turn of events when the five Congress legislators decided to support the ruling NPP-led MDA government, leading to their suspension by the Congress High Command, and needless to mention, the widespread speculation of where they might be heading. Well, I caught up with Ms. Amparin Lingdo, who is the former minister and the suspended Congress MLA, to clear the air once and for all. Let's take a look. First of all, Ms. Amparin Lingdo, welcome to North East Live. Allow me to revis revisit the time when the five Congress legislators decided to make the announcement public and of course when they lent support to the MDA coalition here in the state. And what followed was the AICC suspension. What I felt was you were taken aback and then to a certain extent a little bit bitter, am I correct? Uh, we were bitter, not really bitter, we were a little surprised. We were caught by surprise. Because prior to going to the MDA, there was a thorough in-house uh, debate on this matter. There were in-house discussions, we had debates, we had raising of hands, and it was a collective decision where all members concerned at that point of time were a part of that meeting. So when uh, finally one fine night, somebody tells you that you are now thus suspended, we were surprised. Because that's not how a democratic party works. The manner in which the suspension was ordered was also something that took us by surprise. Usually elected members constitutionally by the constitution of the Congress party. A local authority should not have suspended us. They should have sent our case to the highest body of the Congress. We are elected members. We are not ordinary citizens. They've decided not only to suspend us, but very strangely, the state Congress party has decided to even announce a list of candidates 10 to 11 months prior to an election, which is again an unprecedented approach to declaration of party ticket. Party tickets are not decided locally. One fine day I wake up and I'm told that there's a candidate of the Congress parading the constituency saying he's the candidate. So you can imagine how shocked a senior member like me would be. I remain a Congress till the last day of my service. Nobody can take that away from me unless you expel me, which again the, gov the, the, the Congress is refusing to do. My follow-up question to you is, out of the five uh, legislators, you know, some of them have claimed that the AICC has a different point of view as compared to the MPCC, right? So has the AICC gotten in touch with you or even, you know, spoken to you about the state of affairs within the party itself? Uh, strangely enough, we are still receiving communications from AICC. So if you're asking me if there is a gap between state action and central action, yeah, there seems to be indicators of that lapse. Now, if you're asking me whether I'm in touch with the AICC, I think the AICC has become too engaged in its own internal affairs at this point of time to even bother about the status of one small MLA in a small state called Meghalaya. I, I don't believe in the politics of backlashing because I went to the Congress way back when I was 16, 17 years old. I've been with the Congress since my Sevadal days. So really surprising, but heartbreaking, but 
and nobody will wait for the Congress to take a decision. Politics is very constant and instant. You cannot <clears throat> wait for any high command or low command, state command or central command to take a decision. I have elections in 23, so I have to take a call quickly. And Miss Lingdo, this time, fighting the elections for you is different as compared to other elections you've done because of what transpired with yourself and the Congress, etc. Do you think that would be a setback, if at all? No election is different. All elections are same. You may uh, say that certain elections about are about, uh, you know, my position of support in the in the constituency. Certain elections were about my opponents and the strength with which they seem to have had. This time my elections is a little different only because I will likely not be given the, uh, the, 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 the opportunity to represent the Congress once again. So I will be shifting my, my party uh, because of the situation that I am in. So yeah, so this time Others may think that, uh, you know, I am, I am uh, likely to change parties because of the circumstances or I will be forced to change parties because of the circumstances. But I think my people don't look at it that way. I think they're looking at uh, my leadership, for which I'm very grateful. They're looking at uh, the constant factor in the politics, which is the candidate. Nobody's really asking me why, which party, why you're going to that party, are you going to that party. Mm. So these are the kinds of uh, indicators that I'm getting out of my campaign. I think that rather see me there rather than which jersey I wear. This is the kind of information that I am collecting on the ground. So questions on people's mind. Why is Ms. Amparin Lingdor taking so much of time to decide on where she's heading next? Considering the fact that you're a seasoned politician, you would know your people very much. Can I ask you a question? Are you weighing options here between the UDP and the NPP, if at all? Uh, it's, it's a very crazy situation. We are governed by the law. The legislature is a very sacred entity of the Constitution of India and I respect that entity. I cannot be seen to be whimsically declaring my decisions when I am governed by the Constitution and I will not freely and frankly discuss my um, loyalty other than the Congress till the time is right. Politics is a very serious, dedicated business and hence I will refrain from disclosing my destination ahead of time prematurely and getting into other controversies because for some strange reason, a lot of eyes are on Amprin and any mistake I make will be made a controversy again. So. I will take my time because the system allows me to take that time. As of today, I am Congress. Ms. Lingdo, let me hear it from you. Irrespective of whatsoever party you join, will the roadmap to the 2023 elections deviate from what you've been doing religiously every election or maybe every year, like you said? Nothing deviates. Doesn't matter which position I will hold. Doesn't matter, you know, the consequences of a change in party. I'm here to serve my people. I will continue to serve my people. I will continue to work hard against all odds. I will have to try to ensure that I'm able to consolidate support in my constituency so that once again for the fifth time I can go to the assembly. So I think confusion will be there but if every candidate reaches every doorstep to explain the situation, I don't see why there should be any change in support. Thus far, I have traveled. It has taken me two years to reach every house. 
So I will try to tell my people, choose the constant, evaluate the variables, mm. and go where you think you will find an individual who is concerned about your well-being, who is trying her best to do the best she can, and visibly look at my constituency and the changes that you see around it. So I am happy. Well, fair enough. I want to dwell a little bit on the TMC for a simple reason because they are making inroads in other northeastern states, Tripura, Assam for crying out loud, and now they're here. And that too under the leadership of yet another towering politician, the uh, former Chief Minister himself, Dr. Mukul Sangma. And going by your logic that, of course, the candidate matters in every election, should you worry? Should other political parties worry? See, I am very clear. The reason why I didn't follow my erstwhile leader, Dr. Mukul Sangma, to the TMC is very clear. What does the TMC want to do in my state? Somebody has to tell me clearly. What do I have in common with West Bengal? And if West Bengal is trying to tell me you shift your headquarters of this nation to West Bengal, then you should go beyond elections. I have no issues about a political party trying to make inroads in the northeast or in other parts of the country. But if you're coming to me, then you tell me and convince me first, what are you going to do with me? If hypothetically I take your ticket and I land up in the opposition, are you willing to give me some funds from your state government, exchequer? Will you support me? So, what the TMC wants to do in Meghalaya is still very unclear to me. I had asked them clearly, if the TMC was willing to give me 100 crores per year, 500 crores into five years, I don't mind going. But is that going to happen? Can politics, whether in the national level or at the state level, can politics be clean? Ah. Uh, Tough question. We all aspire to have a transparent, clean, robust government. But at the end of the day, you look at the factors that play behind the politics. Everybody tries to make an extra buck. Everybody tries to bend the rule here and there, to try and accommodate the demands of the work that we are all engaged in. So I will not comment, I will refrain from comment, but I will observe on my understanding of what is this clean politics that everybody is looking for. Because to cleanse a system, you need to start from scratch. While Miss Amparin Lingdo is hell-bent on letting her people help decide where she will go next with her next course of action, we got some reactions from people from her constituency to find out their suggestions. Uh, whichever party she chooses, we as her voters are willing to follow her wherever she goes. Which party do you think would, best suit, would be best suited for her? NPP. Party here doesn't matter, I think. Mm, because uh, the people and his work is our heart. Uh, how genuine you are. Uh, that, that, that's the matter. It depends on the people. The people also, it's up to her also in which party she wants to go. Once a formidable opposition with 17 MLAs, the Congress was left with only 5 MLAs after 12 legislators, including the former Chief Minister Dr. Mukul Sangma, defected to the TMC last year. Following which, the 5 MLAs, Amparin Lingdo, P.T. Saukme, Meral Bons Aim, K.S. Marbanyang, and Mohindro Rapsang join the ruling MDA which is backed by the BJP. Interestingly, only the TMC occupies the opposition in the Meghalaya Assembly. The fate of the five Congress MLA is uncertain as of now. With video journalist Francis Marbanyang, Aaron Lingdo for Northeast Live.